And now, welcome to Press TV's news review program, everyone where we get in depth in one of the day's top stories. Israeli doctors have declared a 24 hour strike after the regime's parliament passed the bill that limits powers of the Supreme Court. A Tel Aviv court ordered the doctors to return to work while Israel's main public sector union threatened a general strike. Protest leaders are saying growing numbers of military reservists will no longer report for duty if parliament continues with the plans. Four Israeli newspapers also covered their front pages in black on Tuesday morning's edition. On Monday, the Knesset passed the bill through a 64-0 to 0 vote after all opposition lawmakers walked out in protest. The legislation proposed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet is part of a wider effort to curb the powers of the top court. Hundreds of thousands of people fanned out in Tel Aviv overnight after the bill was passed. And now joining us for the program is Mr. Tony Gosling, a historian and investigative journalist joining us out of Bristol, and Mr. Bruce Katz, co-president at Palestinian and Jewish Unity, joining us from Montreal. Hello, gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you both to the program. I guess we'll start there in Bristol with you, Tony. Hope you're safe and uh, doing well. Your initial thoughts on why th uh, this extreme right cabinet is so adamant to get this bill through with all the blowback it's gotten, both domestically and from uh, the regime's allies? Well, uh, I think if the uh, London protests a few months ago by uh, Jews in London are anything to go by, it's simply because, and it's, it's quite a famous, it's now quite famous here in the UK, uh, the protest banners said the two, just simply two words, crime minister. Uh, what we've got here is a criminal uh, who is, who is uh, the prime minister of Israel who now is really spending very little time in uh, actually representing the views of the nine million or so Israelis, but he's actually spending all of his time fighting for his political survival. And uh, so he's not only is he taking on the Islamic world, particularly uh, uh, Tehran, uh, he's also taking on the Palestinians. I mean, he seems to be at war with them too. Uh, in the West Bank and Gaza. And now he's taking on his own voters, uh, people. So uh, what we're seeing really, I think, is the total meltdown uh, of the, the basically the, the Jewish dream, which began in 1948, well, a bit before that, but the actual creation of the State of Israel uh, with David Ben-Gurion, uh, 75 years after that, we're now seeing that turn to a nightmare, an absolute meltdown. Uh, the, the biggest political crisis definitely in Israel's history, probably in the world right now. Uh, we, because he, what he's doing is he is he's doing what no politician should ever do. And that is to also, with all those other people Netanyahu is at war with, he's also now at war with the Supreme Court in his own country. Uh, and the reason he's called the crime minister is because he has been paying bribes. Uh, and those bribes are illegal and the courts have been coming for him. So what he's trying to do is clip the wings of the Israeli judiciary. Uh, now, uh, the the it's, 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 it's a terrible tragedy, and many, of course, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Israelis understand this full well. If this is allowed to pass this into law, so that we, what we will get is 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 the end of democracy in Israel. The dream will die, and they, the, it's, it's a terrible tragedy because in the in 1995 we had the Oslo Accords. Yitzhak Rabin, the Prime Minister then, was assassinated by one of uh, Netanyahu's supporters uh, and also mm. possibly with the security service involved in that as well. And that was really the end of the possibility of, uh, of um, uh, peace uh, for the internally in the country. And so the, uh, the, uh, the 20, uh, 30 years or so since then has been uh, a concentration of political power and slowly but surely, all of those democratic uh, guarantees, including now the judiciary itself, the Supreme Court, have been taken down by the uh, these right-wing governments, Likud, and now what we've got is an even more far-right party. So, uh, I mean, really, this is this is a terrible tragedy, but it's also extremely dangerous for the region, for such a powerful nuclear-armed state to become a dictatorship. Thank you, Tony. Mr. Bruce Katz, welcome to the program. Thanks for your patience. Now, Bruce, uh, yesterday Reuters uh, ran this, uh, the Lebanon's Hezbollah, uh, Said Hassan Nasrallah, the resistance uh, leader there in the Lebanese resistance movement, says uh, that Israel, he sees this judicial overhaul 
as uh, something for the regime to be on. It puts the regime, he said, on a path of collapse. And, and this is a uh, foe, obviously, an adversary to the regime. But here's an Israeli uh, general, uh, Amos or Amos uh, Yadlin, said the regime is being eroded internally. So friend and foe see this piece of legislation as part of the regime's death certificate. Your initial thoughts, please. Well, um, you know what, what we need to what we need to remember is that this is um, this is the most extreme uh, right wing government in a series of right wing governments. Uh, you know the the um, collective punishment of the Palestinians, uh, the war crimes, the uh, the um, military. Uh, the military dictatorship, which is essentially uh, uh, present in the West Bank, uh, these are the, these are institutions that existed well before uh, Ben Gavir and Smoltrich, and uh, the uh, really the fascist elements in the in that uh, government, uh, in that uh, present uh, coalition government. Um, this is basically the playing out. Of uh, what started with uh, revisionist Zionism and uh, Zev Jabotinsky, uh, right through Ben Gurion, uh, through Menachem Begin, and through uh, through other other criminals, uh, such as uh, uh, Netanyahu. Basically, Netanyahu is just fighting for his political survival, uh, and uh, he really doesn't care if he brings everything uh, everything down. Around him, uh, I, I really think that what we're uh, what we're witnessing is uh, basically the uh, the beginning of the end of the uh, the Zionist project of uh, Greater Israel from the the river to the to the sea. Uh, one of the I think things that needs to be uh, remembered is that yes, there are tens of thousands of of Jewish Israelis that are demonstrating against uh, the uh, Basically, this putsch. This is a putsch by this uh, by this particular coalition. It's it's something akin to a coup d'état. But mm -hmm. there are no Palestinians there because uh, whatever happens here doesn't really change the Palestinian uh, reality on the ground. What has happened uh, with the uh, the advent of this particular coalition is that the um, the uh, Jewish settlers, who are for the most part completely fanatical, uh, have been given free reign to uh, attack and kill Palestinians as they wish. And uh, to their shame, um, Western uh, Western governments uh, have given them the uh, basically the, the green light and have done so for decades. Well, it doesn't it doesn't change the the fact that uh, Western governments are complicit in. Uh, in, in crimes that are being committed against uh, against the Palestinians, what uh, I uh, hope to see is that if the uh, if uh, the uh, Israeli uh, protesters uh, really do intend to bring this government down, the way to do it is with a general strike. Um, without a general strike, the present coalition will continue. To strong, it will continue with strong arm tactics, and they fully intend. And let's be clear on that: they they fully intend uh, to pass this into law in October. For for the time being, it's gone through a third reading. What that means is that at the present moment, the uh, Supreme Court of Israel can cannot um, uh, cannot block any. Uh, in any uh, law that would would be uh, adopted by the uh, executive branch, and, which is controlled by controlled by Netanyahu and uh, and the extreme right uh, Ben Gavir and Smotrich and others. Thank you, and Tony. I'll only the second question now to you. Um, and to Bruce's point, since January we've seen 30 weeks of consecutive <laughs> protests up to this very day against this exact uh, very controversial bill here. So why isn't this extreme right-wing cabinet listening? And the White House, it said that it's against a lot of uh, policies of this uh, particular cabinet, uh, including the way it's been uh, upping the crackdown on uh, Palestinians. 
uh, with the settlement activity that it's uh, uh, building more settlements, with the attacks on the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, and also with especially this legislation at times even calling it anti-democratic and they're very concerned supposedly that it will isolate the regime, but yet they just uh, anteed up uh, more uh, F-35s, 50% more to added to their fleet, along with uh, adding to their annual $4 billion uh, uh, aid that they give the Israeli regime militarily. So why not use anything as a carrot stick to try to support the opposition, these protesters, over 100,000 strong, 30 weeks straight, why are they getting help from the states? Well, it's because the, the U.S. empire has been, uh, you know, using the Israeli state as a kind of uh, crusader castle in the Middle East for uh, the, the last 75 years. And, um, well, certainly since the Six-Day War uh, in, the, in 1967, much more so, okay? The U.S. support increased then. Uh, but uh, really, it's a, it's a kind of uh, transatlantic Anglo-Zionist project, uh, the, you know, between Britain and America. Uh, the the state of Israel, and uh, it's very difficult for me even to discern quite who's the lead party in that. Is it the Americans controlling what goes on there, or is it the British? But certainly, there is this maniacal element that seems to want to spark off a religious war using the Israeli state. Now, uh, you know, obviously, many other countries such as uh, Lebanon and Syria in the Middle East and, and Iran have, have realised what's going on. Uh, this expansion of Israel, uh, directed by uh, the, these transatlantic powers, uh, but nothing really seems to be being done about it. This is the problem, and the Americans, of course, are going to keep funding. I think actually, what what the Americans seem to want, uh, and the British, is is another proxy war, and that may be what Netanyahu's job is secretly there to do, to kick that off. And of course, he's brought in. Uh, all these fascist far right elements, racists into his uh, cabinet because what he understand what he I mean this is a partly be obviously because of the election, but what he wants to do is, is to stay in power. He has to stay in power to carry on this maniacal project, this religious war to start a religious war. That's I think really what this is about. And of course the British and the Americans will continue to support him because they don't have to suffer the consequences. Uh, and also, of course, the Western press is appalling at covering the issues here. They very, very much protect the idea of, uh, of the Israeli state as much as they possibly can. Uh, you know, and I'm concerned, very concerned about the direction things are taking from an international point of view. Never mind, you know, the, uh, the Israelis all turning out the tens of thousands of them on the streets. They understand what's going on domestically, but the international community may well suffer if, if uh, Netanyahu is allowed to uh, remain in power and the rule of law uh, starts to crumble. It's already been crumbling, but you know, this is a formal rubber stamp. There is no rule of law. It is no longer a democracy in Israel. And if that is allowed to happen and Netanyahu uh, is, is not, the court case is not pursued and he's not sent to jail, that, that the whole world needs to cross its fingers and hope because their only way out really is to start uh, a war. You know, to start some kind of bigger conflagration, which hopefully the, the court case will be forgotten, because all of his population now, and I think actually, in a way, I, I, I sort of disagree with our other correspondent there, because the Palestinians are on the streets in a way, although they're not physically there, spiritually they're there with the Israeli citizens, because they are also suffering with this extreme right wing as it's now becoming dictatorship, not a democracy, with Netanyahu at the head. So uh, there is a sort of spiritual link between the Palestinians and the Israeli people who are out there on the streets and have been ever since uh, Christmas uh, uh, 2022. Okay, thank you, Tony. And Bruce, we only have about a minute left. I want to get let, allow you to get your final thoughts. And you kind of alluded to this, but I, what lies ahead? You, you mentioned that the Supreme Court, for the meanwhile, is somewhat of a lame duck. You mentioned the, uh, the, the tens of thousands of protesters out there and they're gonna uh, double down with industrial action. As far as fragmentation goes and getting uh, their voices heard and two ahead to get, uh, try to put a stop to this thing, do you see it happening? Well, I, I, I think that uh, what the situation is, is uh, at this point in time is, is really something of a catharsis. Uh, this, is the, this, is the, this is the crumbling of uh, the apartheid regime it remains to be seen uh, just how long they'll be able to uh, to hold on because there is there's also internal uh, divisions and strong ones within Likud itself. For example, the defense minister Yoav Gallant. But this uh, can be an opportunity 
for uh, Palestinians and progressive Israelis to form some sort of a, a um, political movement between them uh, to perhaps based on the idea of uh, one uh, democratic state from the river to the sea. Um, I've always been of the opinion that the only way to bring down the apartheid regime in, in, in Israel is a joint uh, Palestinian-Israeli uh, Arab-Jewish um, coalition. And right. uh, perhaps that's, that's what will come out of this. We'll have to wait and see. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us on the program. Stay safe to both of you. That was uh, Tony Gossing there joining us from Bristol. Mr. Bruce Katz joining us from Montreal. And viewers, this brings us to the conclusion of this segment of your Press TV's News Review program. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye for now.